Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to your online summer 2019 course. Um, my name is Ava Nguyen. You can call me Miss Nguyen, Professor Nguyen, Professor Nguyen, um, any one of those works for you. Um, I'm going to quickly go through our Canvas course navigation as well as the syllabus. This is something that I do for all of my face to face classes, and I want to make sure that even though we are only um, an online class, that you still get that same feel of it being a real college class, um, albeit a very different modality. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, before I get started with our syllabus here, um, I want to thank all the students that uh, were at my live stream earlier today um, on Tuesday. I know that there were a lot of technical difficulties, so um, I apologize for that and thank you for hanging in there with me. I was not expecting YouTube Beta to be that complicated or that different to use, um, and it was not cooperating with my encoder. So um, I apologize for that, but um, I wanted to quickly record this video so you at least get some sort of information from me today um, and a quick walkthrough through the syllabus. So um, as you can see, you can access the syllabus from our course modules our first week. Um, it should be under the syllabus plus meet your professor link. Um, once you get to that, you'll see a little quick bio about me as well as all my contact information. It's all Always going to be on this page so um, I have my contact information in multiple areas of my email of canvas um, and on the syllabus so that um, no matter where you are you should be able to easily find it um, and contact me um, you can download the syllabus here or you can always view it on canvas by um, clicking one of these magnifying glasses um, and so here is the syllabus. Um, of course, I have our course description, which is straight from the catalog, as well as the student learning outcomes. These are outcomes that the school has provided me with and charged me with making sure that you are able to accomplish each of these three outcomes by the end of the semester if you pass with a C. And so that's going to be my focal point as an instructor to make sure that you can hit these three skill sets by the end of our summer semester. Our summer semester is very short. It's a little uh, over eight weeks. It's it actually hits right the eight week mark and so it can go very very quickly and it can be very overwhelming um, however I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to manage our course load and your time um, in the coming review um, very quickly, you can see my contact information here. My office is actually in the Fontana campus in FNAC 125 downstairs. However, because it is summer, I'm not there um, as often as I am during the regular semester. It's very sporadic, so um, I might be there, I might not. Um, and so that's why I don't hold regular office hours because I am out and about a lot during the summer um, and I most definitely am not always on cam uh, campus. Um, that is my office phone number right here that 909-652-7457 you can call that at any time um, because I'm not on campus I will not pick up most of the time however if you need me urgently or it's an emergency um, you can go ahead and call that phone number leave a voicemail with your callback number and I will call you back um, if you leave a voicemail it kicks straight to my email and it lets me know that you called um, if you don't leave a voicemail though I won't have any idea idea that um, you called and so because of that um, I won't know who to respond to and I won't know what your question is um, so make sure that if you call that phone number um, always make sure that you um, uh, uh, leave a voicemail there's my YouTube channel um, and as I said here I don't have regular office hours but that doesn't mean that I won't meet with you so if you crack open the textbook and you're like whoa this is a lot of information which it is Go ahead and set up an appointment with me if you feel like you want some one-on-one -on -one time about the key aspects of the chapter. Um, I use a, a program called Zoom. It's absolutely free. You can download it from uh, iOS or, or for iOS or Android on your phone. You can also download it to Mac or PC. Um, you do have to pay for the premium account, but for the basic account, it's absolutely free. And you um, only really need the basic account in order to communicate with me. I myself have the premium account, um, so you'll get my benefits of having that unique um uh, conference link you can always click on that when we have a scheduled conference um, and in addition to this I also have embedded zoom onto canvas itself um, so if you go over to the left side here you'll see confer zoom and you can use Canvas itself to communicate with me as well. Um, and if I have any scheduled student appointments, you'll see them here. Um, so you'll know when I'm already busy or I already have or, or if I'm with a student. Um, 
So uh, send me a message on Canvas with some times that you are free. Give me at least two or three dates and times that you are available and I will try my best to accommodate you. Um, even if it's a 15 minute call or a 30 minute call or if it has to be an hour, I'll do whatever I need to do and meet you where you're at in order to help you through this class, which I know can be very overwhelming. Um, if not the first week, definitely the second week when we start having multiple chapters or multiple, ish, uh, multiple concepts that we're dealing with. So with that being said, let's go on to some time management skills. So um, in a normal, traditional, face-to-face, three-unit class, the expectation is that you are meeting in the class at least 45 to 48 hours over the course of the whole semester. And then in addition to that, you have 36 to 42 hours of outside time of doing work, of studying, um, completing assignments, etc., etc. And so I have programmed our online class to be the exact same way. Um, you do not get any additional privileges than my face to face classes, um, other than that you get to not have to physically come to class. Um, that's the only extra perk that you get for being online. However, I hold you to the exact same standard and quality of work that I do my face-to-face -face classes. And so over the course of this whole semester, I do expect that you have spent at least 45 hours on Canvas, watching my lectures, um, participating in discussion boards, reading through my announcements, reading through weekly material, for about 45 hours throughout the course of this, uh, all of these eight weeks. In addition to that, you need to be spending 36 to 42 hours outside of it, um, writing your journals, writing your papers, and reviewing um, for quizzes and exams as necessary. And so while it seems like a lot of work, it only seems that way because you're not regularly attending class. And so you have these additional 45 hours that you have to account for for yourself. So that's why to be a successful online student, you really have to be a self starter. You have to block out times during the week and say, these will be the times that I will work on my class and nothing else should be able to interrupt that time for you. You should really be setting aside that time um, and, um, because that's what you would have to do for a face to face class. Um, um, in addition to that, um, there are some student expectations that I have here. I'm not going to belabor them, but of course, I expect you all to be respectful in all of your communication between me and other students in the classroom, um, especially on the discussion boards. It's, it's widely understood if you choose to stay in this class that you must be respectful of everyone. But I highlight here that disagreement is not the same as disrespect. We can disagree um, in a healthy way with one another without disrespecting one another. And that is why um, uh, I think it's so important that we acknowledge the validity of other people's opinions. You can say that this is how I see it, this is my opinion, um, and at the same time recognize that other people have valid opinions as well. Um, please make sure that you um, refer to me and your other um, colleagues and peers by the names that they and pronouns that they request to be called. If you have a nickname or pronoun that you prefer to be called um, when I'm typing to you or when I'm messaging you, please let me know so if you're Timothy on my roster but you want to be called Tim let me know if I slip up remind me I will learn and I will make sure to get your name right um, as I mentioned before um, you have to be a self starter in this class and a big piece of that is reaching out to me when you need help. Um, I will stay in constant contact with you by responding to your journals, responding to your discussion boards, and sending out announcements to the whole class. However, if you are struggling because we don't meet face-to-face, -face, I don't really know that very easily. Um, in my face-to-face -face classes, um, I can tell when a student is having a hard time because um, of their nonverbal cues, or maybe they stop attending class as much. And so I will reach out to them and, and offer them support. However, in this online class, it's not as easy for me to um, sense through Canvas if you need any more help. And so please reach out to me and take that initiative. I'm always happy to meet you wherever you're at, um, but you have to reach out to me. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that you're doing just fine. Um, of course, by now you should be a little bit familiar, if not a lot familiar with Canvas. So I'm not going to belabor this point. However, I did leave um, a link here for you um, with a complete guide and resources to Canvas. This link um, right here is actually created by Canvas itself. So it has a full archive of topics. So if you wanna know, how do I submit an assignment? How do I take a quiz? How do I upload something? Um, that's where you would go um, because since I'm busy teaching course content, I can't also be tech support for 
for you. There are a couple things that can help you with, um, but it is your responsibility to learn how to use Canvas and navigate it. One of the big things I wanna highlight here is this little doozy right here that I put into my syllabus, which is do not use your phone to do your work. Um, the Canvas app is amazing, and I think every student should have it. If you have not downloaded it yet, you absolutely should. However, you should not be doing work on it. The only things you should be doing on it are four key things. Reading my announcements, checking your grades, assignments, and deadlines, messaging me and messaging your other colleagues. That's it. You should not be relying on it to do work at all because it can be very glitchy and not reliable. Um, of course, if you do work on your phone, there's nothing that I, can, I can't stop you, um, but you do recognize by staying in this class and with this clause in my syllabus that you accept all responsibility for any technical issues that happen while you're doing um, work on your phone. So for example, if your canvas crashed or something happened while you are um, doing things on uh, your laptop or your computer, we can totally work that out. Just send a screenshot of what happened to me and uh, attach it to a message and say, hey, uh, Miss Wynn, I was totally ready to submit this assignment and then it froze on me. I don't know what to do. And you and I can totally work that out. But if it's something that happened because you were trying to use your your phone to do work, um, that's something that you have to accept responsibility for and I most likely will not allow you to make up. So please do not use your phone to do work. I'm not um, saying this just to be a stickler for no reason. I'm saying this that because in the uh, seven years I've been teaching, it's never really, nothing positive has come out of a student trying to do work on Canvas. Most of the time, um, students have come to me with multiple technical issues that are a result of trying to do things on their phone. Um, for example, you posted to a discussion board, you think it went through, but you were in an area where you really didn't have signal and it didn't actually go through, and Canvas won't tell you that. Um, so please make sure that you stay off your phone as far as doing actual work. Um, I also think it degrades the quality of your work when you're not typing out your senses and proofreading them and spell checking them and you know rereading them for quality um, so again use your phone to check my announcements to make sure you've met all the assignment deadlines all of that good stuff it's a great way to have the class on the go in your pocket I recommend that every student has the canvas app downloaded make sure you download the right one there's three of them um, make sure to download the one that says canvas student because if you download the one that says canvas parent or teacher it will not let you in because you are not a parent or a teacher on Canvas, you are a student. Um, so make sure that um, you do you download the right one, otherwise Canvas won't recognize your ID. So as I said before, make sure that you treat this class the same as your face-to-face -face classes. Um, for example, as I say here, once something's graded, you can't resubmit it just because it's online, right? Once I give you a grade, the grade is done, and we can always talk about the grade, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, but you cannot just resubmit it just because it's online. Um, my face-to-face -face classes don't get to do that, so again, you don't get more privileges than them, you get the same, and so you don't get to do, um, you don't get to resubmit something um, over and over and over again to get a good grade. Um, I want you to make sure that you learn, understand, and apply, not memorize. And so I want to get to our um, assignments as an example of that. So the biggest key takeaway from every week should be your journal. Um, your journal is easily, usually um, the most point heavy assignment of every uh a week um, and that's because I use it as an opportunity to have a conversation with you to see how you're doing um, because quizzes and discussion boards don't always reflect how you're doing I use the journals as a way for us to intimately check in with one another as professor and student to see what where you're at and how you're doing the key thing about the journals is that I expect thorough detailed thought out responses not one word responses not one sentence responses you can see from my journal samples that I have placed on our module so if you go to week one you'll see some journal samples right here and you can take a look at these these journals of these students and you can see the little comments that I've made on the side as I've graded them and I use them as a sample so that you can understand that I'm not always looking for you to know it all and master it all every single week um, you might have one week where you totally get everything and one week where you have no clue what this theory or what this idea is trying to say. And that's totally okay because to me that's being a student is admitting when you don't know something and being ready to work on it. And so 
in a journal, if you don't know how to apply a theory or apply a concept and you're not sure how it works, I will not accept I don't know or I don't get it as an answer because you will not earn points for that. Um, I will only accept it if you try your absolute best to process the information and make an educated guess. So you can see here that this student in the second journal, for example, um, this student doesn't understand one aspect of Gibbs and they admit it and they say, I don't get it. If I were to take a guess on how to apply it, here's how I would do it. And you can see here that they've given a thorough um, paragraph trying to tackle this um, idea and they received full marks for this even though their guess was not a hundred percent correct and so for me I I'm looking for you to um, give it your best shot to give it your best go every single time and that is what will earn you points not giving up and saying that you don't know um, the answer and so um, and of course even if you get it wrong in my feedback and comments I will tell you great guess great shot let me redirect you to the correct path or the correct way to apply this um, and I'll always be there to guide you but if you don't give me anything I can't guide you um, so make sure that you try your best on your journals regardless of whether or not you understand it for me um, no one operates from a deficit minded model um, I operate from a growth model so for me I don't start off at 40 points and look at what you're doing wrong and subtract points along the way what I do is every student starts at zero for every assignment. I look for what you're doing right and I add on points whenever I can. Um, my mindset is to look for the things you're doing right and earn, give you points where you've earned them rather than focus on the things you're doing wrong. And so that leads me to my next grading point. Whenever I'm on the fence about anything, just know I always give you the benefit of the doubt. So when I'm reading a journal, reading a paper, and I'm not entirely sure, I'm on the fence on whether or not you've mastered something or I'm, it's not quite clear what you're expressing or saying to me, I will always round up and I will always give you the benefit of the doubt. Meaning that the grade that I give you is the max possible points you can earn on that assignment. So um, because of that, I will never go back and change a score unless I've made a calculation error. So if I've calculated it wrong, if I've added up a quiz score wrong, for example, then I will change it. But I will not change um, any grades based off student request because the grade you see, as I mentioned earlier, is based off my best absolute um, uh, attempt to give you as much points as possible. So the scores you see is a rounded up score already um, of me giving you the benefit of the doubt and me giving you as many points as um, absolutely possible. Um, and so um, I don't accept late work, um, especially in a class like this that's online, that moves really fast. Um, it's just really difficult to always be having to catch up with late work. So I expect students to be able to get things done on time. Everything is usually due Fridays for us. Um, and uh, even then, you don't have to submit it Friday. You can submit it Monday. You can submit it Wednesday, whenever you have time to get things done throughout the week. Um, but things like having a job or being busy, generally speaking, are not excuses in my eyes for not getting work done because I think it's really healthy to have good time management skills and to be able to get things in by a deadline however I you know was a student once before and I know stuff happens right emergencies happen so if you have an actual emergency so for example you fell and um, hurt yourself and broke your arm and had to go to the hospital or um, a dependent that you have a child or your spouse um, has some sort of medical emergency then yes by all means I'm more than happy to like you make up the work with no penalties at all um, and I'll grade it as if it was turned in on time um, but that can only happen if you give me documentation I know the word documentation is very um, it sounds very serious but I'm actually quite flexible by what I mean by documentation um, a lot of times to me, if it happened, you can prove it. So if you were really visiting your grandpa in the hospital, um, most of the time you'll have some sort of visitor sticker. I'll even take that as documentation, right? Um, so I'm very, very flexible about what that means. And you can even message me and say, hey, Miss Wen, I went here and here. I had to do this because of an emergency. What type of documentation do you need from me or what options do I have? So it's not always just a doctor's note. It can be a lot of things. Um, so for example, a student, um, 
um, had a flat tire um, and missed a deadline and they showed me their tow receipt, for example. So I'm very flexible when it comes to that. Um, but of course, it has to make sense. Um, it, it can't be an emergency that happened Monday. Um, an emergency that happened Monday most likely won't stop you from turning in stuff by Friday unless you can prove that you know, it had a five day uh, impact on you. Um, so it is, of course, within reason, um, but I'm very flexible and more than willing to work with you. Um, if something truly did happen to you that you didn't expect to happen and it stopped you from doing your work, I'm more than happy to help you on that aspect. You can see here that I have a little donut chart. Um, you can tell I was a little hungry while I was making the syllabus and you can see that I've mapped out all of your points for the whole semester. Um, if you are a previous student of mine, you know that I don't like any surprises. So I am as predictable as they come, of course, except for today with my live stream being wonky and crazy. Um, but you can see here that I have um, set out your assessments and assignments as well as a breakdown of what your grade come where your grade comes from. So. If you take a look at this, you'll see that your discussion boards and your journals are the top two um, things that um, make up your grade followed by your papers. Your assessments are important, but smaller portions. And this is because for me personally as a student when I was in college, I had a lot of classes um, where 99% of my grade was just the exam and I'm not a very good test taker. And so um, I really didn't do well in those classes because I didn't really have other avenues to show my mastery of my skills of what I was learning in that class. And so I do have to assess you. I think exams and quizzes are incredibly important assessment tools, but for me, they're not the end all be all. It's really your active and consistent participation in class and your ability to demonstrate your mastery and your effort um, in the discussion boards and journals. So for me, that's where the majority of your grade um, should come from and does come from here. And the last thing I want to show you is, of course, here are your student resources, but here's your calendar. As I said before, I am very predictable. Um, I don't like any surprises whatsoever. And so I've mapped out our entire semester. You can see it here. Um, while it's not all on Canvas yet because I've hidden um, every module um, beyond week one and two because I don't want you jumping ahead just yet. Sometimes students jump ahead um, and get excited um, before they're able to really absorb and take in the class. So I've hidden weeks, uh, any everything after week two, but um, this is basically our game plan. This is what's going, you know, what's going to be expected out of you. And I do this because I also know that you as students are busy. And so you might have work, you might go on vacation, you might have other things to do, and you can go do them, honey. But Here's the calendar of when everything is due and you can plan your life and your schedule around um, what is expected out of you. So um, if you even take a look on the week of July the 4th, I know a lot of you might be on vacation or hanging out with your family for the holiday for July 4th. And so I only have minimal work due that week. I don't, if you notice, um, I have at least six things due a week, but um, this is just three things here. So I've kept it to just only one chapter. Um, and you'll see that um, I try to give you some leeway so that you can take a break as possible. Um, but this is basically um, what I'm looking for um, free from you for the rest of this semester. Um, the last thing I want to mention before I jump over to Canvas and get this video done real quick is um, Microsoft Word. So there's a lot of tips in here that I want you to look through. But the biggest thing here is um, using Microsoft Word. I only accept things on Canvas using Microsoft Word. Please do not use Google Docs. It is so finicky sometimes that, that the formatting doesn't always um, switch over properly. And I mean, it works, it's great. I think Google Docs is awesome, but why use that when you can have Microsoft Word for free? Yes, so this is not some LimeWire weird virus link. I promise you, this is the actual Microsoft Office um, website right here. And if you use your student um, uh, email, the one that Chafee issued you that ends in edu, you make an account and you can get Word, Excel, PowerPoint, everything absolutely for free for you. Um, and so it's so awesome that Microsoft allows this to happen. So you have absolutely no excuses to not submit things using Microsoft Word because it's free. You just got to do a little couple clicks here and there and then it's yours on your computer. Um, and if anything, I think things like PowerPoint, Excel and Word are so important to um, today's modern student. Um, you're going to not 
only submit Word documents for my class, but for a lot of other classes besides mine. So um, it's the standard program used to submit things. So um, please make sure that you do yourself a favor and get this for free uh, while you're a student so you don't have to pay for it later um, when you're no longer a student. So. Now that we got that all out of the way, let's jump into Canvas. So I'm not going to belabor this too much. Hopefully you've taken some time to explore and you've also recognized that I'm a huge Office fan. So um, you'll see announcements here, assignments, discussions, grades. Um, if you click on the modules assignment here, you'll see everything um, that will be due. I've tried to break it up with um, what you're supposed to do every week. So this is content stuff and this is assignment stuff. So this is all you'll have to do by June 7th, which is this Friday. Um, but of course, as you can jump into next week, there's a lot more work and a lot more things that get to be done. Um, again, this is not because I'm trying to be unfair or mean or give you busy work. This is a summer class and we are only eight weeks. So um, my job is to take what I normally have in a full semester of 18 weeks and compress it down to eight. So that's why we'll have to cover multiple chapters in a week. That's why we will have to um, do multiple assessments and discussion boards in a week um, because in a regular face-to-face -face summer course, you will already have to meet almost every day anyway. So. Um, I'm not trying to give you extra busy work. This is the calc this is me translating what I do in my face-to-face -face classes straight to my online classes. Um, if anything, I've actually taken care of um, a couple chapters. I've kind of um, either whittled them down or deleted them completely from the syllabus um, so that uh, you have a little bit more time to marinate on um, the chapters that I think are most crucial um, to the course. Um, so please don't think of this as, oh, I'm trying to drown you in work. This is really, um, bare minimum what my face-to-face -face classes already do. So with that being said, I hope that I have answered all of your questions and more in this welcome video. Um, I hope that you've gotten to know me a little bit more. I'm looking forward to learning all about you. Um, I have already graded a few of your onboarding assignments, um, which is really exciting um, to, know, to learn about all of your career aspirations. There's some awesome nurses and teachers and police officers and engineers out there that I already know about. So I'm very excited. And the one thing I want to remind you of is that in my class, I really feel that communication is a lifelong skill, no matter what type of career you go into. So for every journal, every discussion board, I'm going to expect that you infuse your own personal experiences in the prompts that I ask you. You'll notice that a lot of the prompts I ask you um, are based off in your opinion or in your experience, um, because I want to see how the concepts that we're learning every week resonate and mean something to you um, because I want this class to be something that you not only take because it's a GE requirement or a major requirement, but that you can leave this class with actionable skills that you can take into the workplace that make you marketable and attractive to employers. And so that's really my goal. Um, so when I ask you in the discussion board, say more or connect this or do this, it's because I want to take you where you're at right now and take you to that next level um, of critical thinking and being a competent, effective, appropriate, and amazing communicator as we will learn in chapter one when we study the principles of communication. I hope this video was helpful for you. Um, again, if you were here for the live stream, thanks for bearing with me. I send you all my appreciation. And if you have any other questions, you know where to find me. Um, I, I don't trust technology. So like I reviewed in this video, there are multiple ways you can chat with me, Zoom with me, inbox me on Canvas and email me as well. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can contact me. One last thing I wanna mention is that, of course, I have a video lecture for every single um, chapter. You'll see the same thing here where I'm talking and I'm going through my slides. If you are interested in just looking at the slides again after you watch my video lecture, I also give you a link to my slides themselves. So you'll be able to see them here um, and you'll be able to play through them um, and zoom in and zoom out and look at them. Um, I also embed videos as examples. So I don't play them on my um, video lectures themselves because um, I can't have two sources of audio running at the same time, at least not with the setup that I have. Um, but if I tell you in the video lecture, hey, watch this video, it's a great example 
of communication accommodation theory, you can go into these lecture slides um, and play this video. So for example, this is a video, you can click play, it'll link you to it, and it'll start um, loading for you and playing. So um, you can be very interactive with the slides and that's why I don't use PowerPoint, I use Prezi so that you are able to um, interact with my slides on your own time as well, um, in addition to seeing my video lecture. Um, anyways, have a fantastic first week. If you need anything, give me a holler, and I will see you all on the discussion boards and talking to you in your journals. Bye.